Hello everyone, welcome to Confidence Leads to Success. I am really excited about this interview because I get to meet Lizzie Bernthal and interview her because she is just phenomenal. Um, she has served 25 years as a healthcare professional in the British Army with a PhD in psychological well-being. She was awarded Principal Fellow of the Higher Education Academy in 2017 for her global contribution to higher education. Then she set up her business, Release Your Potential Limited in 2018, and she delivers to her groups a one-to-one -one coaching and creates workshops and masterclasses online in helping women globally and i totally adore her because she is on a mission to empower you to find that confidence in yourself to just be who you want welcome lizzie oh excited to be here thank you it's so good to have you here i mean i know you are a confidence mindset coach you are a speaker i'm so honored to have you here and you're an author um and i'd love you to share your mission and how you want to really help people to remove that toxic relationships in, in all sorts of areas yeah. in their lives. Yeah, well, my overall mission is to get rid of toxicity in the workplace because it just destroys lives and it's so unnecessary. So that's the overarching mission. But I do that by supporting female leaders and entrepreneurs to be the best they can be, because once we are the best we can be, we empower our teams to be the best we can be. And there's just no room for toxicity because we just stand tall, own who we are, are the best versions of us. And we it just has no room to to exist so that's that's, that's what that's my mission it's so good i'm gonna go back to the beginning of your journey because a lot of women i find when i meet them they have got some passion they they're creative or they want to start a business or write a book for someone who has written a book and who has that achieved so much and, and been awarded for your your contribution to the world um how did you find that confidence to actually take that first step i think i think it's it's all a learning journey and actually my my main book I'm just in the process of writing but I've written chapters for other books as well I just want to be upfront about that um but I've written lots of papers and so but I think it's 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 first of all it's acknowledging that we have everything within us already and it's the stories that we make up that destroy us if we allow them to Yes. And I think it's learnt experience throughout my whole career. Now, I never, I've always been passionate about supporting others. So I was a nurse and a midwife before I moved into research and then before I left the army and set up my own business. And looking back at my career, I was always wanting to give others a voice, but I didn't sort of know, I didn't join up the dots till I left the army. So I think, you know, even as a small child, I was the one that wanted to help others and sort of help the one that was being bullied and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But in the process of that, I acknowledged I didn't have my own voice. I was very, very passionate about giving other people their voice. But I'd been exposed to that toxic environment and I had been bullied and I had found it horrible. But however, now looking back on that, I was absolutely a victim. No wonder. No wonder. I was asking for it, but obviously didn't realise I was asking for it. And so I think this is why I'm so passionate about it, because toxicity can happen in all sorts of whether it's in our relationships or if it's in work. And what I mean by toxicity is anything or any behavior that makes us feel worse than we are so so I've been exposed to that not even realizing that I was in the fact that I thought it was me I wasn't good enough if I was bad at what I did then uh, this wouldn't be happening to me so it must be me it's um I think it's like that kind of finding your that self desires and what, knowing what do you want um, and then instead of being around people who gives you the, the feeling of less off, yes, whatever that is, is actually makes us stay behind, stay little, stay small, yeah. and, and then stay kind of, you kind of fit in, don't you? Because you then don't disturb anybody and then you're like, because most people seem to be 
Um, I've done this myself, spending most of their life being liked. And that, see, it's fascinating you bring that up because I explored this in my PhD, I was looking at the impact of military life on the family left behind during deployment. And what's fascinating is, is that we, we have a fundamental need, as we know, of, of belonging. Because back to millions of years ago, if we didn't belong, we got thrown out the tribe and then we'd die and we'd starve and all that sort of stuff. So we all have that fundamental need of belonging. The fascinating thing about belonging is belonging is the opposite of fitting in. So we can spend so long wanting to fit in because we want to belong. And yet in the process of fitting in, we are portraying ourselves. And that's where it all starts unraveling because we can only belong to ourselves. Once we know we're okay, everything else happens. And we spend so, we can, if we're not careful, and this is what I help, like you do as well, help women acknowledge this. If we spend our time wanting approval from other people, we will never get it. And that just knocks us down even lower. The only person we can approve of is ourselves. Amen. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and that is when the magic happens because when we stop, oh, actually, maybe I'm okay after all, then we show up differently. We show up empowered and we show up confidently. And then it's the energy. And then it all kind of goes the opposite way. We've broken that vicious circle and we like show up. And I think, I don't know if you've heard of tall poppy syndrome. Yes. Yes. So I, you know, I acknowledged in my career. Um, I was that tall poppy. I was the one that I, when I was out and about doing my stuff, globally speaking, supporting nurses around the world, da, 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 all this amazing stuff, which I absolutely love being on stage and doing all that. I was on fire and making, knew I was making a difference. And then I'd come back to the office and I, my boss would sort of stay small. Who do you think you are? You shouldn't be doing this. Da, 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 da. And I never heard of tall poppy syndrome. And I, I realized now that was what was going on. And I was staying small because I was not, I didn't want to show up powerfully because, you know, out, out in the world I did, but back in the office, I didn't. And this is why I'm so passionate about supporting women to do this because I know what that feels like, but I, I also know how common it is. You know, is. when you've got a, a, a someone who sees so much more in you than you can see in yourself and they feel threatened by that and therefore they put you down which reinforces that cycle of I can't be good enough if I was good enough this wouldn't be happening to me mm -hmm. and so that's why I'm so passionate what I do but also I acknowledge that these are the stories we make up as children and this is where we uh, need to unpick all that stuff Pull out those weeds, get rid of it. Because a story we wake up at seven or eight can be how it shows up in a boardroom 30, 40 years later. That's right. Not wanting to show up at a meeting, not want to speak up. And I always say that, like, you yeah. we like we seem to be stuck in that seven-year-old mindset that yeah. how we have not heard, we weren't able to speak up, we weren't able yeah. to drive, and yet we have given our life. Let let that seven year old little girl to drive the car. Yeah. No wonder you keep crushing and scratching and and, yeah. and your light drops off. And do you know what I mean? So it's just Absolutely. so important that you just give up on that seven year old and just forgive her. Just say to her as a 40 year old woman. I love you. You've done your bit. I'm in control now. And I, it's amazing you say that because I always talk about with my clients, let's put your little girl back in the back seat where she belongs, lovingly, caringly. You're not yeah. dismissing her. You're just saying, right, okay, it's all right. I'm, I'm yeah. safe. I'm looking after you. I'm driving the car now. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah. God, it gives me goosebumps. It's so <laughs> important. It's yeah. so important to find your own values, ladies. Just find your own values. Yeah. and just hold on to your vision not not yeah. because somebody else wants you to be in that lifestyle not because somebody else wants you to be dressed in a certain way or speak in a certain yeah. way or on a walk yeah. in a certain way just be who you are i love it and i just we just we just need to start a movement for this i mean they're just yeah. honestly you know 
I find it tragic where you see the most inspiring women um, who are just small because they they haven't got necessarily the understanding. So let's just pl pluck out all that weeds and all that stuff and, you know, be the person they really are um, because the world is missing out on so much gold just because of the stories that we make up that are not even based on reality it's amazing so how do you how do you help your ladies your women to find yeah. that ability in themselves how do you how do you give them yeah. that blueprint to find their yeah. own awesomeness <laughs> yes exactly well it's it's um generally it's unpicking the weeds it's uh, it's really identifying those stories that we make up in childhood which might be totally innocuous they hadn't even thought of so, so it might be something as simple as a teacher told them when they put their hand up at school the teacher told them oh you've got that wrong why did you do you should know that by now and then they, oh okay I won't speak I won't speak again and then suddenly they're coming to me that they're finding it frustrating they're not getting promoted when they when they know they should be and all that kind of stuff so it shows up so that's the often the sort of the starting point is is what when they're ready to because our subconscious is very clever our subconscious will only release stuff when it's ready to release it so often they might not be ready at the beginning of the program to actually release all this stuff and then as we we kind of unpick a little bit more suddenly it's oh my goodness I remember this is what happened so so that part of that but also it's giving them practical tools and techniques for resilience and confidence and self-belief and exploring their vision exploring their purpose exploring their values I think finding our really really nailing our values is absolutely crucial because that helps us own who we are and it it just suddenly it's like water over a mosaic we suddenly realize what okay that oh my goodness that happened because of that and that happened because of that yeah. and we then it helps them join the dots of things that have gone well in their life and things that haven't gone well in their life up to date and they realize it's all down to a fundamental story that they made up when they were a child yeah how we perceived what happened be around us is so true. Yeah. Like I was talking to my brother uh, last week, like there were certain things and events was happening in our life, in our family, in our home. And we talked about those events and what I understood and gave meaning of what had happened in the past was entirely different to what my brother understood yeah. and gave meaning. and and. The, the meaning of he gave to those events has affected his life in a completely different way to my one. And then once you, like you said, once you go back to it and um, pick it all up and say, actually, I misunderstood. Perhaps life isn't as bad as what I gave a meaning when I was a seven year old girl. Exactly. And so here we are, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 30s, yeah. whatever age we are with our software of a seven-year-old yeah and it, right. it and it's um yeah and it it's actually so simple once you once you do it um but I was unfortunately so many people aren't aware of that and so this is why right. I think it's it's spreading spreading that belief that actually you know you have these stories that you make up that are not based on reality but they're driving you unless we unpick it so success for there for everyone this is why i love having these interviews with women like you who are also helping other women to find that voice yeah. that inside them that awesomeness inside them because yeah we, we have everything i know the society seems to some people seem to want us to stay there because we're feeding their egos what do you think of that yeah i think ego is a fascinating subject i think ego ego are really I see egos as as our saboteurs our saboteurs telling us we're not good enough um whereas our true true empowered authentic self which is like our sage our wise God always gets it right is the one we need to be pushing and unfortunately again because of some story the childhood or how the people have behaved to us um we start that narrative of not being good enough and that's that's our ego that's our ego that's saying stay small don't don't push yourself stay because I don't want you to get hurt so you know yeah. just, just keep your head under a bushel and because yeah. you might if you if you show your head above the parapet you might get shot so stay low that's right 
And yet we all know that actually, if you put your head above the parapet, that's when the magic happens. It is so good. I love that. It's so good. Honestly, I, I can't, I mean, I always say we're going to have to change every woman's life one story at a time and empower yeah, them and inspire it. them to 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 just believe in themselves and they're worthy and their emotions are worthy and you don't need to hear that you are loved to know that you are loved you can only somebody love does yourself. That. You, can, yeah. you can't love others until you love yourself and that's work that's constant work in progress yeah. and particularly at the moment with having emerging as we emerge from this pandemic and we've been through so much in the last two or three years i think this is where the resilience comes in because we are way more resilient than we could ever have imagined. I mean, if, you know, we in, in UK, we went down into lockdown on 23rd of March, 2020. And most of us thought that it would be like two or three weeks and, you know, we will be sorted. Maximum by three months. Like, exactly. And so, you know, we cope with that thinking, right, OK, I can do this for a few weeks. If we had known then, right, you're going into lockdown, it's going to be two years. And all this stuff's going to happen in between. Deal with it. <laughs> deal with it. You think, whoa, I can't deal with it. But looking back on it, we've dealt with it. And I'm and anyone that's here now, right now, be so proud of what you've achieved in the last two or three years, which demonstrates how resilient you are. And sometimes I think it's really important to reflect back now because we can so often look back oh I should have done this differently I should have done that all the shoulds the shoulds and the couldas and the wouldas yeah <laughs> opposed to the integrity of wow this is how far I've come this is what I've oh my goodness I would never have believed I could have done that that's right honestly yeah. I have I mean I come from Turkey right now I'm in Turkey but I live in the UK in Brighton um, but when I came to the UK, I came as an au pair and I started um, after a year or so, I started an alteration business on a bike, um, oh. cycling house to house, altering uh, customers clothing and just trying to earn some living money. Um, and I always had this uh, amazing desire to become a fashion designer, to own my own label and become that globally sought after fashion designer. Um, but I never thought I would be able to do it because I had this self, this, this belief, this voice in my head kept saying to me, oh, you can't be a fashion designer because you haven't studied fashion. You can't be a fashion designer because you can't draw. You can't be. So I kept quiet. Like you said, I was scared to get the bullet in my head. and so I kept down. So I didn't stand mm. up. I didn't. I honestly, I kept having people on my um, platforms and events are continuously organized had them on my stages and i kept holding the spotlight on the others because i was so afraid to own my gift and the lockdown has actually helped me own that wow and, wow. and, and throughout these last two to two and a half years my brand has become from a local a boutique to a global fashion brand now oh, sells no, globally got, wow i've got serious goosebumps now i mean that's <laughs> that amazing and i think that's that's brings us on to the whole thing about what is your genius you that's know right. i think it's so important to have a think about what is your genius and i love um ikigai which is for you i'm sure you know ikigai but it's basically it's like a venn diagram what do you love to do what are you good at what does the world need and what will they pay for? And then once you've got the middle of that, you'll never work again because yeah. it's just magic. Yeah. I think it's so important to really think about what do we love to do? What what would if the if the fairy godmother came with a fairy wand and said, You can do anything, be anyone, do anything, what would your answer be? And yeah. that is the goal because it's tragic to think how many just never find their genius yeah. and, the, and the, don't give that gift to the world like you yeah. with your passion. because I think they did so focus on the how yeah oh, if you don't worry about the how just find what do you want and then the how will come because 
you will be like you said at the beginning of our conversation you'll be vibing the energy out of your soul because you'll be yeah. your genius you will be you'll be sharing your gift you'll be doing what you love and it will show and people will find you yeah, exactly because it's just radiates it's just radiates yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God, I love having this conversation with you. We are so much in the same yeah. same tone and I love it. So um, I'd like you to give us your definition of confidence. Ah, it's a great question. So number one, the first thing before I give the definition, just to tell all your listeners, so hopefully they'll know already, we have everything within us already. Yeah. So already, so we're born confident. It's just stuff happens in the way that stops it. So for me, confidence is all about trusting yourself to be the best you can be. And it's so much of confidence is to do with trust because um, it's trust. And if you think you have, you have confidence that someone's gonna do something for you. So that's trust too. You have confidence that you'll get up in the morning and you'll wake up in the morning. That's trust too. So trust is a fundamental element of confidence. But in order to feel confident, we have to trust ourselves. True. And not, you know, and then once we trust ourselves, we can trust others. So awesome. <laughs> yes, and I think I always sort of talk about um, you know, babies. Babies are born with innate confidence. You never see a baby lying in a cot saying, Don't look at me, I've got chubby legs, I've got stripe, my hair sticking up, I'm just yeah. not having a good day. I don't even have eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My hair, I haven't even got any hair yet. Yeah. So um you never see babies. They just watching a baby or a small child up to the age of two or three is magical because they flip out of emotion just like that. They don't add any value to it. One minute they're crying, one minute they're laughing, the next minute they're quiet, and they they just flip from emotion to emotion. That's right. Without generating all that overthinking of how I sh how I should be feeling right now, and yeah. it just happens. So. That's my first tip for anyone when I talk about confidence is you have it all. Let's just find it again. It's not something you've got to create. It's not something you've got to magic up from somewhere. It's just simply finding what's already there. It's amazing. Thank you so much for your wisdom. It's <laughs> been so good to have you. Um, and I love that you have gifted um, our audience a yeah. discovery call um, yeah, of with you, which yeah. is a, an incredible value. Uh, yeah. I'm so generous. If any of you would like to uh, hook up with Lizzie, please do. She has got incredible energy, and and I know she will just go and fish that confidence. Fuck out that time. weed. Yeah, that you might not even know you have. But yes. I also do free webinars as well. So um, I advertise those on LinkedIn. So um, on link I will I just be putting on all your details on our show notes okay. where they can actually approach you and find you and connect you. Please do connect with her. She is incredible. Thank you so much, Lizzie, well, for being here so and sharing your wisdom and experience. Yeah, brilliant. It's been a joy. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And I will come back with another episode with you soon. Take care and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Take care. Bye.